investors have to be patient and they don't want to be patient in a sector uh, sometimes. But uh, Gold Corp's growth was all due to exploration in an area that was thought not to have any potential left. Rob, I'm always interested in the kind of people that kind of we talk to on the assay TV. Um, I'm just wondering what your, uh, how, how did you get into mining yourself? Like what was the drivers that you as the person got into mining for? It started with my father. Um, and when I was 10 and 11, he had me charting stocks. He was in the investment business um, and exposed me to that. And then when I was a teenager, he decided uh, his client should get into gold and that would be in the mid 60s. Um, and so he put all of the, his clients into gold bullion, Canadian and South African gold mining shares uh, when gold was around $35 an ounce. He thought the system was being flooded with money and currencies were being debased. So um, that was my exposure. Um, and then I spent the first 18 years working in the investment industry, doing research, sales, um, and portfolio management, largely in the precious metal space. And at one point I said, well, there's, I met a couple of guys and they keep finding deposits. There's more deposits to be found. Let's jump into the mining business. And so I uh, ended up coming in, doing a uh, competing bid on a hostile bidder and ending up buying control of two mining companies. Um, I thought I would do the financial architecture and let the guys who know something about mining run it. And after uh, about four months, I decided the guys running it weren't doing a good job. And within a year, I stepped in as the CEO of two mining companies and re remade the management team several times. And that was uh, how Gold Corp began. Oh, wow, there you go. And then um, your, your McEwen Mining, I guess that came later. It came later, McEwen Mining. Uh, I ran Gold Corp for built it over 19 years. We went from 50 million to about 8 billion market cap. Our last 13 years, our share price compounded at better than 31% annually. So um, we had a great run for all our shareholders. I was the largest individual shareholder, non-institutional. So I was happy as well. Um, and I thought, well, let's um, see if we can do it again. And I started really just buying junior mining companies where I'd buy 10 to 30% of them because uh, I'm a big fan of exploration. And then at one point I said, well, why don't we put a couple of them together? Um, and there was a group that we had property in the United States, um, in Nevada, just south of Barracks, uh, well, what was Placer Dome at the time, uh, Cortez Hills Mine. And then um, we had cash flow coming out of Argentina and thought, well, there's uh, projects that need money and there's cash flow. And so put the two together. Unfortunately, the time was terrible. Timing was terrible in that this was achieved at the beginning of 2012. <laughs> so um, uh, after that, the, the metal prices fell all the way through to the summer of 2015. Um, but today we have four sources of production uh, with various issues, but um, the, the goal was to build a company and the goal remains to build a company that could qualify for the S&P 500. And there's only one gold stock in the S&P 500. And the logic being that 80% of the value of the US public markets are contained in the 500 companies in the S&P index. So um, when the gold market starts running quickly, there'll be a, a flood of money coming into those stocks because it's a very highly regarded index. So you want to be in that S&P index as a gold stock because there's only one. Post 9-11, they removed all of the foreign companies from the S&P 500 
So it is largely, almost exclusively a US index. Um, and the US at the moment is the largest market for gold shares in the world. So you wanna be there. We trade on um, the New York Stock Exchange and Toronto Stock Exchange, but about 90% of our trade is New York. Um, okay. And, and um, I'm, I'm just curious, like in, in your estimation, if, you know, if you were to go back, um, kind of, a, you know, if you were to start out today, um, at, like in, in the mining sector, um, as you did, you know, all those years ago today, um, COVID uh, pandemic not, notwithstanding, do you think it's easier or harder to, or more difficult to kind of get started the way you did? Circumstances may be different. There is more regulation today. Uh, so it's a little hard. It's slower to build a mining company. But I'd say we're still seeing discoveries and pretty impressive discoveries in known mining districts where people thought there was no opportunity. Um, I can think where Gold Corp, where we had our success in the Red Lake District of Ontario, Canada, um, we discovered gold a mile below surface in a mine that was supposed to be closing. It had three year life, it was high cost, it had difficult labor history. Um, and we found gold in a setting that was contrary to everyone's belief of where you'd find the gold. And it became one of the richest gold mines in the world. Now, recently there's a company, um, I made a, an investment in about a year, year and a half, two years ago, in the Red Lake District. And they've had a phenomenal run. Um, we put money in at $1.50 and it's at over $14 now. Um, and they're finding the majors have gone through there. Um, Plaster Dome have been there for a long time, even Gold Corp been there. <laughs> and they were finding it on a deposit that they're getting great intercepts. Uh, there's another company in the area that was a past producer and it, it bounced around for more than 20, 30 years and it's showing great life right now. Um, you're finding deposits in Northern Europe, in the Scandinavian countries. No, I'd say um, there's still going to be surprises. There's still deposits to be found. People are coming and just reinterpreting the data. So I'd say it's not, I'd say that someone coming into the mining industry, we're at a point where the system has been flooded with money, the economies of the world, uh, the case for owning gold is stronger than ever. Um, and there's still more gold to be found, more nickel to be found, more all sorts of minerals. So no, I don't think it's harder. Okay. And, and just talking more about COVID-19 uh, pandemic, how has it uh, impacted your business operations and uh, um, what have you done to kind of address the um, and maintain business continuity? All of our sites shut down for a period of time, some in Argentina and Mexico by government mandate, I guess in Canada as well. Um, out of concern for our employees in the United States, we shut down for a period there. So the first impact was a drop in revenue. Um, second impact is uncertainty about what we're going to produce this year in terms of how much gold um, and what will be our cost. So that it introduced an uh, element of uncertainty in our guidance. Um, in terms of protection, I mean, Part of our shutdown, we took it early um, to prevent the spread out of concern for the employees. Uh, we now have at our gates, there's sort of um, facial recognition and a temperature scan automated. Um, we have some oxygen device, measuring devices that measure the dissolved oxygen in your blood because um, COVID is a respiratory disease that impacts your ability to absorb oxygen. So that's another indicator. 
Um, like everybody else, there's you got to wear a mask, uh, social distancing, um, and in some cases, it's also trying to get people healthier. In certain areas, um, some of the miners aren't in the best physical condition, and one of your best defenses is a strong immune immune system, and <laughs> being out of weight, out of shape is not the way to defeat this. So um, got a little program. It, it's not quite boot camp, but it should be. Well, I think, yeah, our, our result of all this will be at least a re-examination of all of our healths and, and uh, yeah, at least some sort of uh, uh, focus on kind of hygiene and public health uh, overall. Uh, but, you know, if we took, if we took uh, COVID uh, out, of the uh, equation, we talk more about mining investment. I guess I'm curious, like, what does Rob McEwen, the mining investor, look at when he looks to make an investment in a project? You know, if we went back a year, like, what was the kind of sim like normal criteria that it, things that you look at? Uh, I'll look at how the stocks performed. If someone say it's a public company, come in and say, where is it? Is it at its? Is it at a, a high? Or is it, has it been neglected in the market? Has it been avoided? Uh, have there been some problems? I, I'd have to say I'm a bit, in, well, I'm quite inclined to look at distress situations uh, because that's where I see if there's an opportunity for a turnaround, uh, that's where you're gonna get your biggest gains. At least I believe you're gonna get your biggest gains. And some of my biggest returns over time have come that way. Um, so to be that, um, look at how much management owns of the company and do they own it? Is it beneficial ownership because they have options or, you know, DSUs, RSUs, restricted shares or, um, I just want to see how committed financially they are and emotionally to do it. Are their actions, do they match their words? Um, are they saying, oh, we've got a really great prospect, then they turn around and sell their shares. Um, I don't, uh, and then it, it's geography. Where, where are they? Are they near a known mining district or do they have a different interpretation of the district? Um, and try to weigh those. Uh, I'm not a, I've tried investing in Africa a couple of times and it hasn't worked very well for me. So right by to say my focus is largely North America, bits of South America and Northern Europe. Um, I'm just comfortable there. Australia's had a great run. Um, there've been some wonderful discoveries down there, um, but I haven't spent a lot of time there, but it, it's a, a rich gold district as well. Okay, yeah, you, you just uh, kind of covered sort of my next question in terms of uh, preferred oh. investment destinations and why. So <laughs> you got to it already. Um, maybe tell me a little bit about um, your kind of advocacy and support for the Save Canadian Mining uh, effort. Um, what, what's your view on it and, and why are you kind of uh, involved with it in some way or in, in some capacity? Well, the mining industry is an important industry to Canada. It generates a lot of wealth uh, for the communities it's in. Um, Canadian mining uh, personnel have gone around the world. Uh, they carry a lot of technology. I think they improve the lives of many people in the communities they go into. And the short selling has become quite a game after they got rid of the uptick rule. So before you couldn't sell, if the stock hadn't ticked up, you couldn't do a short sale. And now it's just wide open. Um, and you have short sellers, a lot of it is not disclosed. Um, so I, I just think 
you it's an in, it's an important industry it's a fundamental industry for the world um it, it, they've been successful suppressing stocks here they'll do it elsewhere as well so it's sort of an advanced guard sure. to try to prevent further deterioration of this sector sure and i guess you know if you took um kind of the predatory short selling you were just speaking about is there something that you know that what other advice that your views that you believe that uh, Canadian companies need to do to be competitive abroad well just thinking of the short selling for a moment I mean every company should be encouraging its shareholders to register their shares or at least say to the custodian that's holding their shares that these shares are not available for loan. Um, the ETFs and the index funds are probably the biggest suppliers of shares to the short sellers because they're looking to earn additional income to offset their operating expenses. And, and they earn small amount of funds for lending out their stock, which somewhat ha harms their performance, but um, and I look at the short selling at some point, uh, someone's going to come along with a big discovery or turn it around and the predatory short, short selling is going to hurt some of them quite badly because it'll go the other way. Um, so how do we could become more competitive abroad? We have to make more money. Uh, <laughs> People invest in stocks because they believe they're uh, going to go up. And the best way to go up is if you're making money or have a big discovery. Um, yeah. And exploration sometimes makes, ha investors have to be patient and they don't want to be patient in a sector uh, sometimes. But uh, Gold Corp's growth was all due to exploration in an area that was thought not to have any potential left. Um, we have a couple of properties that I'd say fall into the same category. They have very, a lot of similarities to when I looked at Red Lake. It's, but it takes time. And unfortunately, um, at some points in the market, the market won't give you time. Yeah, and um, is there ways in which um, the industry can help juniors access capital, like alternative forms of capital in your mind? Well, you've seen companies, royalties and streaming companies come out and be a source of capital. I don't think that's helping the industry. Um, those, it's good to own a royalty or a stream but if you're a company selling one, I think you're giving away your future and the whole reason why investors would invest in you um, when you've sold a royalty or a stream on your property. Um, and you can see the divergence in performance. Uh, the royalty companies and streaming companies have done very well because they bought the profit margins of the mining companies. Um, what could the other companies do? to help the juniors. Um, industry organizations have lobbied the government to keep flow through shares or a tax driven instrument there. That's been a very useful innovation. Um, I think you have to lobby the government and make them uh, understand that the contribution mining makes to uh, an economy. Generally it's about for every dollar invested, there's a $2 benefit in the economy. Whereas surface sector, it's about a dollar in and 70 cent benefit. Um, so you, you get a much better return on your investment there. Um, but I'm not sure the industry tends to have a lot of independence. I don't think it thinks about helping juniors other than the big guys, uh, they stop their exploration and downturns in the market. And then they look around for picking up juniors that have done the exploration that they're not able to do at the time. Um, we go through cycles. 
That's a good question, but I maybe some other people have other way ways of looking at where that help might come in. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, that's an answer I've asked others. I haven't gotten that before on the more government side of things to help support junior mining companies. Um, but y you would think that streaming and royalty companies are kind of a new option that's come in the last couple of years or so that is viable. Oh, well, I don't, I don't view streamers <laughs> or oh. uh, the royalty companies as a, uh, I think they're a scourge. <laughs> I think they've destroyed the industry. They they hold out the dollar and wave it in front of companies, and they're saying, "Well, we're going to go build. Doesn't matter what the site, what part of the cycle we're in. We need the money to build." And it, from say 2012 through 16, that was really the only source of capital for the industry, particularly juniors, and they gave away their future most of them. So I'm, I'm not opposed to owning a royalty company or a streaming company, but I am opposed to companies selling them. Right. Um, and I, I think we uh, might have mentioned this before, um, or just you might have talked about it a bit before, but just talking about commodities, like what's, uh, what's hot for you right now and what's not in terms of commodities? Like if you were I have a really to Brad, I have a really narrow focus. Uh, it's been gold, some silver, but gold is, to me is a monetary metal and it's money. It's the ultimate form of money. Um, it doesn't have the scale that nickel or copper or iron ore has or the, the other base metals, but I've I've never really looked too far beyond the precious metals. We do in McEwen Mining have a very large copper deposit that's waiting for uh, one day to be developed. Uh, it's about 30 billion pounds of copper. Um, so I, I've learned to like copper. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be an important element as we electrify the world. What, for transportation and other purposes. Um, and the urbanization that's going to take place in um, Southeast Asia. Um, I mean, we've had China grow and Vietnam's growing, but there, there's a population base there that's bigger than China in those collected countries. And I've seen some estimates that, that the rate that they are going, if they were to grow at half the rate of China, in 10 years, their economies, collective economy will be as large as China. And that means a huge amount of urbanization, which will be using lots of metals, but copper will feature very prominently in there. So um, I'd say I'm hot on copper. Hot on copper and yeah. precious metals as always. <laughs> yes. All right, and, and, and has COVID done anything to impact that? Uh, that view uh, over the long term, or is it a, a, particularly with gold? Actually, with gold and silver, you you obviously would I would assume that COVID has helped uh, the precious metals. Well, we we've seen countries around the world get their printing presses going at warp speed. Um, let's call it QE QE five hundred. It's on steroids and. The whole, no one's really asked, well, few people have asked the question, how is the government going to pay for all of this money that it's spent out to protect their populations? Um, it's debasing currencies and we're seeing the broad market respond to all this money coming in, but it's, it's going to need another fix and another injection of capital at some point. Um, in the not too distant future to keep it going. Um, it's, it's weakened, COVID's weakened the economy and introduced a level of uncertainty we've never seen before. Given governments the right to enact martial law on a wide, very wide scale, um, will they be doing away with paper currencies? and insist that 
you must use digital currencies so that you're not passing or having the possibly passing the virus on to others. So with digital currencies, do they monitor your bank account? Do they get a better fix on taxation? Um, there are things that are happening out there that it's sort of like a frog in a pot of water that's being brought to a boil. The frog doesn't notice it's happening until the water's boiling and it's too late. COVID has accelerated the, the reach and the control of governments around the world, all in the guise that it's for our own safety. Um, I think there's another reason. And so owning some precious metals might be a way to safeguard yourself from some of the government actions that are taking place. Um, and owning, and the metal stocks, the precious metal stocks are a way of participating in that beyond the physical and usually amplify the mood, the movement of the metal. And, and copper is also pretty good for its qualities in terms of bacteria um, and kind of the health. Yes effective for the use of copper, right? Yeah, copper plumbing, great way to stop the transmission of germs. Yeah. Copper door handles and all of that, which we've gotten away from. <laughs> yes. Did we used to have those a long time ago in Canada? Yes, yeah, they were copper pipe. Okay. Copper uh, faucets and yes. Okay, after, maybe I was born after that time. <laughs> Uh, okay. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. There we go. Uh, Rob, I, that's all I, uh, questions I had for you today. I just wanted to say thank you for, uh, taking the time, uh, in Ontario to, to come in and talk to, talk to me while I'm here in Hong Kong. Um, hope you're keeping healthy and, and safe, uh, even now as we're slowly open, reopening things in, uh, in Canada there. Well, I, I'd just like to close by saying that um, I was a large shareholder of Gold Corp and I'm the largest shareholder of McEwen Mining. I own 20% of the company. I take a dollar a year in salary and don't take any options. Um, and the thought was try to build a company and last year was a disaster of almost biblical proportions. Uh, we experienced a fire, then a flood, COVID sort of like a plague. Uh, and uh, we've gone in a different direction than the rest of the market. Uh, so I think we're turning around. We made some big changes in management. Um, but uh, we're going to have to spend a couple of quarters uh, repairing our reputation in the marketplace. Okay. Well, we, uh, we look forward to seeing how that pans out. Um, perhaps maybe have you uh, come back again in, you know, in a year or so to update us on your plans. Happy to do so, Brett. Well, thank you for this, Rob. Take care. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.